Gosh, we are jam-packed on a Monday. Winners and losers, as always, here in the football season. And, uh, oh yeah, Colorado doesn't have a football coach anymore. Let's go. Our Locked On Pac-12, your daily podcast on the Pac-12 Conference. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Locked On Pac-12. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin, D1 play-by-play broadcaster. Thank you for making this your first listen or your first view of the day. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your number one source to stay up to date with the Conference of Champions, which is why, if you haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe wherever you're listening to or watching the show. I appreciate everybody out there very, very, very much who has already done so. I also appreciate LinkedIn Jobs, the official college football recruiting sponsor here at the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. Terms and conditions apply. What a weekend. What a busy, busy weekend in the Pac-12. It all starts on Friday night when UCLA plays up to the level of their competition and makes a big-time statement. And that was the biggest story of the weekend, that UCLA asserted themselves as a contender in the Pac-12 in 2022 with that win, or at least that they're capable of being that, right? It's still relatively early in the conference slate. We've only had two full weeks of league play. But that was an impressive performance from UCLA. Washington was playing on the road for the first time, but that was still a good Washington team that had been absolutely rolling and everything just looked out of sorts for Washington, more so than it had when they were playing in in Seattle. I expect them to bounce back this week against Arizona State, but that'll be for later in the week because the story here is UCLA. and, And boy, that's one of the biggest wins of the Chip Kelly era, not just because They knock off a top 15 team for the first time since I think Brett Hundley was the quarterback at UCLA. Now, they did beat number 16, then 16th ranked LSU a season ago. That was pretty big as well. But this is huge to do this in conference play, to stay undefeated, be 5-0 back in the top 25 and control your own destiny going forward when it comes to that matchup with Washington, who could also be a team that still gets into the Pac-12 championship this year. That is a really big win for Chip Kelly and company. And man, DTR was good. I mean, he was sensationally good in this game. If you watch and study the game the way that I do way more than I really should. But what I saw from DTR in that game, and what I'm sure sure other people notice, is his execution, his ball placement, his pocket awareness, and his overall sense for playing the position and where to go with the football were just tremendous from the start. And Washington couldn't get off the field on third downs. Sometimes that was because DTR made a really good play, because he put the ball right on the money. Look at the last play of that game. The last play, third and six, Chip Kelly trusts his fifth-year quarterback to throw the ball. He doesn't go conservative. Maybe give the Huskies a chance with a a punt and no timeouts to go down the field. No, he'd seen that story before against Fresno State a season ago with Kalen DeBoer on the other sideline. He said, no, I'm putting the hands, the ball in the hands of Dorian Thompson Robinson and UCLA's quarterback delivered a dart, a ball that he threw before his tight end's head had even begun to turn around, puts it on the money and UCLA clinches the victory. Nice little comeback there from Washington, converted a couple fourth downs, moved the ball down the field, had a two-point conversion. I think they had two two-point conversions, uh, if, if memory serves. They it, you know, made a little run. It was ultimately too little, too late, and UCLA was just a better team on, on that particular day. I don't think it's time for Washington to panic. It, it's not you know big worry time or anything like that. I said going into that, I thought it was a bigger game for UCLA than it was for Washington. That's kind of how it looked and felt Once the Bruins started to establish themselves, they looked like the more motivated team. And there were just a handful of plays here and there. Like there was one, uh, one of the touchdowns to Jake Bobo where the Washington corner just kind of haphazardly after getting beat went to make the tackle he missed and Bobo went in for the touchdown. There were just plays like that where the Washington defense had easily its worst game uh, of the year. They had been good, right? They didn't allow that many points against Michigan State, and then the Spartans kind of you know, put on some garbage time points and whatnot. But UCLA really exploited that Washington defense in ways that we just hadn't seen through the first four weeks of the season. But the Bruins 
who played four opponents going into that one that were just not that good, that were beneath them. They were big favorites in every single game as they should have been. They barely get that win against South Alabama. And because of that, they were able to elevate their play in that game against Washington in the Rose Bowl, where there was a significant road crowd in the building, as we kind of expected, decent home crowd, but there were plenty of Washington fans there as well. And they made quite, quite the statement. They're the biggest winner of the week. The biggest loser of the week is Colorado, who, look, I, I fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me for putting them in the Pac-12 prime picks. I really didn't think you could fail to cover two touchdowns or more five weeks in a row, but they did it. And now Carl Durrell has been relieved of his duties as a head coach. I think Buff fans largely are going to be happy with that. I think they should be because it's not just that Colorado was struggling. I'm willing to to look at a coaching situation and say he should be given more time because context matters. What school you're at matters. The state of the program when you took it over should all factor in to how you evaluate a head coach. But at the end of the day, Carl Durrell took it over and had a good first season that turned out to be kind of fluky in the pandemic because you know who else was good in 2020? Washington, who struggled mightily in 2021, and Stanford, who is not a good football program right now at all. They do not have anything going for them. I'm not a fan of this long mesh RPO stuff. It's not working for David Shaw and company, and their defense is abysmal. So then you come out the next year with high expectations after that 2020 season, and you go four and eight, and you say, okay, that's that's not exactly what we were hoping for, but young freshman quarterback, let, let's see if we can grow no answers, nothing. It was just going down and dragging it out. Wasn't going to help the program. I, I think this is a, a fine move to make. Now I could have seen giving him another week or two, you know, because they did really play a tough non-conference schedule. Air force has one loss. Minnesota just got upset by Purdue, but everyone gets upset by Purdue in the big 10 from time to time. I mean, Ohio state gets upset by Purdue from time to time. And then they open with, with TCU, Who's got the college game day game against Kansas this week? And they're five and zero. So I understand giving him leeway there, but that's an Arizona team that that is still rebuilding, right? And obviously the rebuild is going very well. The Wildcats are three and two, and that's an excellent place to be. They've already surpassed Arizona has their twenty twenty two win total. I thought they'd be over. I didn't think they'd do it this quickly. I thought it might take a little bit longer, and they're going to get into uh, some tougher games that aren't quite as favorable, right? You're not going to have Colorado and North Dakota State at, at home forever. But the fact that they are sitting at three and two right now is a great place for Jed Fish and company to be. And that will certainly get discussed as uh, as the week goes on. But I think for Colorado, this is the right move. You, you needed to find a new coach. I didn't love or really understand the hire to, to begin with. He hadn't been a coach in a long time. And he wasn't very successful when, when he was at UCLA. He had, I think, one or two good seasons, but it, it just felt kind of strange. And it felt like they, they found the nearest coaching candidate that they could after Mel Tucker bolted on him for, for Michigan State. So I, I'm, I'm happy for Colorado that they can move forward and, and look to the future now and have something to potentially feel optimistic about because – now you have to go out and make a hire that, if you're Colorado anyway, and I'm sure this is what the fans are thinking, hopefully the administration will be able to deliver, but one that can not only recruit at a decent level, but can, can make your program competitive right away. Because Colorado is staring down the barrel of an 0-12 season. I have never seen, granted I haven't followed gambling lines my entire life, I've never seen a Power 5 football program be a two-touchdown or more underdog in five straight weeks and go 0 and 5 against the spread. I've never seen that before. I bet you it doesn't happen often and it's indicative of how poorly this Colorado team has been playing this year. They they just have not been in games and they were kind of around in this one against Arizona, but ultimately that was a winnable game for Colorado. That and Arizona State and maybe Cal are the only games I could have seen them getting a win coming into the season and through the first couple of weeks, as we've seen how a couple teams situations have played out, man, it just, if you, if you were losing by more than 17 points to Arizona, it's, it's hard to, to justify keeping you around. And Carl Durrell, by all accounts is a really good guy. 
but he's not the right man for that job. And I'm glad that Colorado made this move. They are now going into a hiring move. And if you need to make a new hire every day or every hire now feels like there are a lot of high stakes. And that's the case for Colorado. And if you're a small business, it's the same thing. You want to be 100% certain you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs finds the right people for your team faster and for free. Go in there, post your job, create a free job post, then add the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are hiring and let LinkedIn help you find the right candidates. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster, and they're always qualified using things like screening questions to make it easy to focus on candidates with the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you want to interview and hire. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. So Colorado makes the right move. There is still one of the losers this week. And remember, or if you're new to the show on a Monday in football season, there are five labels a team can get after their performances on the Saturday or in UCLA Washington's case, the Friday prior. You can be a winner. And that's a category that deserves some celebration. If you're a fan base, I'm saying, look, you should be enjoying this one for a couple days and major optimism, not always the same sort of optimism for a given for a given program in the Pac-12. Major optimism, good vibes, enjoy it, celebrate it, relish it, all that sort of stuff. You can be a winner or you can be a loser where it just looks like things are going down, 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 down. And it's unclear how much worse it really could have gone over the weekend. Then there's a couple labels in the middle, right? Lean win, lean lose. You can win or lose and be in either of those categories and then no opinion. So let's get to our labels. UCLA, big winner. Colorado, uh, a big loser. But also at the same time, kind of a winner. Because I think this is what Buffs fans have wanted. That's probably what you're all thinking right now. Like, this is a great weekend. Carl Durrell is finally out as the head coach. And they can, you know, look to the future. And and we'll speculate plenty here on the show about who they might hire. There's a lot of different directions you can go when you're conducting a coaching search like this. But, uh, but overall, Colorado in 2022 is, they could go on 12. They, if they they really really could i hope they don't because no one deserves that and like arizona a year ago they were staring down the barrel of an 0 12 season but they found a way to get one win and guess what now arizona's three and two just saying it's not nothing and it gives us people in boulder something to celebrate at least for a day i never want to see a program go 0 12 it's just it's it's no good um The other big winner of the week, Washington State. You talk about a bounce back, and it was my favorite and only successful, unfortunately, Pac-12 prime pick uh, of the weekend, Washington State minus four against Cal. They came out in that game. It wasn't a great start, but it was how a lot of teams in this conference are going to look against Cal on a regular basis. And that's kind of an ugly slug it out tough to move the ball game in the first quarter, maybe even the second as well. This was, I believe, a 7-3 game at at the half. And then you start to figure things out. The Washington State defense held the Bears under 10 points. They were feeling really good after they torched Arizona for 49 the week prior. Different animal up there in Pullman with Jake Dickert at the helm. And then the offense eventually started to execute. This this game finished 28-9. to nine. It could have been even more of a blowout for Washington State. Cam Ward threw two interceptions inside the five. He didn't release the ball inside the five, but it landed in the opponent's arms inside the five. Once was at the two, and once was in the end zone. So those are mistakes, and this is something I talked about coming into the season. It remains true for Cam Ward. When you go from the FBS, or from the FCS level to the FBS level, the biggest thing you have to be able to adjust to as a quarterback is learn what throws you can no longer get away with. And Cam Ward made a couple throws in that game that I looked and said, man, you are not playing nickel state. You have got to recognize that guys are faster. They make better reads and you can't just rely on your arm always to make plays. And I think he, he's he's improving. He's getting better. He's still making a lot of really good throws and explosive plays, but there are going to be those moments that he has to continue to clean up for Washington State to keep having success, and they looked good. They looked good in this game, 
it was not a perfect first half, but no one against Cal seems to ever have a perfect first half. It's it's tough. That is a good defense. It always is. And stop me if you've heard this one before, Cal Bears fans out there listening or watching. The offense didn't score enough to win the game, but the defense kept you around in it. Hmm. Where have I heard that one before? Where have I seen that one before? Ah, oh, yes. Cal for the last four years under uh, Justin Wilcox. And uh, look, I got no personal vendetta against Wilcox, but they need a new offensive coordinator. It's just not working. Putting up a lot of points against Arizona is nice, but you do that at home, then you go on the road, you follow it up with nine points against a good defense in Washington State. That's more what I expect to see from Cal's offense as this year goes on, depending on the opponent. Uh, Cal goes into the lean-lose category because it's just such a typical Cal game, and it's not like it was the least winnable game on their schedule going forward, but it's a loss. And I look at it and go, yeah, the concerns I had about the bears coming into this year, playing themselves out so far when you play legitimate competition, but Washington state an unquestioned winner, because they needed to make a statement to themselves as much as the rest of the pac 12 that, Hey, remember we had Oregon on the ropes should have beaten them and we let it get away. But there are two ways you can respond to that. It can motivate you to be the best version of yourselves going forward, or you can sulk around and say, well, we missed our opportunity and we didn't do this and we should have done that. And now Wisconsin's maybe not as good as we thought, but I think Washington State kind of started to send them in that downward spiral. That's a different conversation. Washington State, a winner this week, literally and metaphorically, because they're four and one. That's a four and one football team Jake Dickert's got. Tough team coming up this week in USC. About as tough as you're going to find in the Pac-12, unless you're going to Salt Lake City to play Utah. But I tell you what, that's a pretty darn good place to be. If you told Washington State Cougar fans coming into the season that they'd be 4-1 and one right now, I think they'd take that. I think they'd always, always take that. And Dickert continues to do a, uh, a good job. Teams that get the lean win label this week. Not cause for celebration per se. But fans look at the game and say, that's what I wanted my team to do. That's what I expected them to do. And that's what I'd like to see. That's how I'd like to see them perform on a weekly basis. You got three teams in this category this week. Oregon, Arizona, Utah. Now, Oregon and Utah were playing two different caliber of opponents because Stanford is just not a good team. They are going to be better only than Colorado, but maybe. I, I, I don't know. Stanford is not good. They cannot stop anyone. Oregon ran wild. Over 300 rushing yards. That's such a crazy thing. Stanford has just completely lost their identity on defense. And they have forgotten how to stop the run. They are no longer a physical football team. I, I think it's it's worthy of exploration here on, on the show. But in summary, I think that as... Football has become a more offensive and pass-heavy attack. Stanford has prioritized recruiting because the recruiting classes have not fallen off. They've been the same as they always have been, you know, consistently in the top 20, 30, year in and year out. But I think when you look at the caliber of players that they are now bringing into Stanford versus what they used to be able to do, I don't see them sending offensive linemen to the NFL. I don't see them sending defensive linemen to the NFL as often. I know they just had one, uh, Thomas Booker, I'm pretty sure was his name, but not a high level player, like a, a decent, respectable, maybe NFL rotation guy, but Stanford has just lost its edge on that side of the ball. They're, they're not physical. You can run all over them. And Oregon did that over the weekend. So Stanford gets the, uh, the full on loser label. Cause it looks like it could be another really bad season. It could be worse. It could be worse than last year for David Shaw and company, because Nothing's going right. The offense is sluggish. They put up three points against the Ducks, who have a decent defense, but teams have thrown on Oregon all season long. That, that's that's clearly been the case, and Stanford couldn't exploit that. Three points and a half, that's, that's not going to cut it. And then the defense just gets absolutely torched. Turnovers continue to be a problem. There, there's just not a lot right going with that Stanford program right now. But Oregon looked the way for the most part, they had penalties and execution issues early in this game, but their defense kept them in it in terms of having and keeping a lead. And then the offense just continues to be explosive. The uh, Ducks really have done an excellent job compared to last season of creating more explosive plays. 
both in, in the running and in the passing games. And, and Bo Nix had an 80 yard touchdown run. He's still got the wheels, no doubt about that. But Stanford's struggling. They're coming into Autzen Stadium. Oregon, you know how you should look? You should punch them in the mouth. And at halftime, it was 31 to 3. Utah plays a superior opponent in Oregon State. Clark Phillips had three interceptions in this game. Pretty sure he was like the national player of the week uh, or something like that in all of college football, as he should have been. Oregon State's got some quarterback issues. Chance Nolan left the game with what they listed as a neck injury. He's thrown six interceptions in the last one and a half games he's played. That's that's concerning, but that's still a good Oregon State team. That That is still a good team, and Utah looked Really, really good. I'll get to Arizona and why they're in the lean win category after their performance against Colorado. After I remind you all about Bet Online, your number one source for football betting info this season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sport wagering information, informa- wagering information and other information with live betting and up to the minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including major league baseball, MMA, boxing, and my personal favorite golf, by the way, I say it every week that I am on here and I've got a Mariner shirt on today and I have never wanted to say it more. Go Mariners playoff bound. And if I wanted to bet that I could go do it at bet online. Head to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. Yeah, I had to. Uh, it was an emotional night for me on uh, what was that Friday night? Yeah, Friday Friday night, same night as that uh, UCLA Washington game. That was a great. That was a great night for me as a sports fan. Um, waited my whole life, my my entire life. Never seen the Mariners go to the playoffs until then. I've uh, been watching since I was about six years old. So call it 19 years. It was 19 years in the making. That was awesome. Back to the football, Arizona, every win right now for the Wildcats should be celebrated. I don't care who it's against because last year they lost to NAU and that was with their new coaching staff and that called into question. And I'm glad they didn't overreact and say, yeah, that was a calamity. Didn't turn things around. Let's go. This was not a good hire or anything like that. No, they gave him time. And that's what I want to see at any program that hires a coach. I don't expect you to win right away. Sometimes it happens, like Kalen DeBoer at Washington, who's done that at every stop now. These one-year turnarounds have been something he's done time and time again. I mean, he's only had two head coaching jobs, but he did his no-see at Indiana as well, and that's a really hard thing to do, and he is doing that right now at Washington, and they're still a competitive team in the Pac-12. Do not write off the Huskies. Do not write off the Huskies. It is way, way too early for that. I hope Husky fans out there aren't, overreact and say, well, what, what happened? This was a disaster. Is this, it was that you're not going to win every game. UCLA played well. Washington did not. It was on the road. Simple as that. But Arizona gets this win against Colorado and it ultimately leads to the removal of Carl Durrell as the head coach. But Arizona, you're just looking for wins and, and conference wins, right? Is Colorado the worst team in the PAC 12? Yep, they are. But you know what Arizona has been the last couple of years, the worst team in the PAC 12. And now they've they've climbed above that level. And you can't expect at a program like Arizona that doesn't have a rich tradition of, you know, elite winning in this conference since they joined as a member of the Pac-10. And I don't actually remember what year that was, but my whole life and well before I think, you know, even before I was born, you can't expect it to all of a sudden become a, a situation where, where you're contender, a, a contender or even a situation where you could expect to be bowl eligible this year. Is that within reach? Sure. Arizona State is a dumpster fire. That could be a fourth win. But they still lost to Cal on the road, who I'm not that high on. I think they still have room to grow. But anytime you have climbed yourself out of the proverbial hole that you dug yourself as a program for Arizona, you have to feel good about wins. You have to feel good about wins. Is it, oh my gosh, let's celebrate? No, because Colorado is a disaster right now. But Arizona is sitting at three and two, and they're hosting Oregon this week, and they'll get a shot at one of the top teams in the conference, and they'll get it at home. And Oregon has struggled in the desert before. That, is, that has happened many a times. And so Arizona will have a chance to show 
where they're at in relation to the top teams in the conference and they open as just 11 point underdogs. I mean, that's a tremendous amount of growth. Look at the respect they're getting a couple of years ago or a year ago. Actually, I think it was Oregon. I want to say like minus 20 something or so at Austin stadium. And you get a few points back when, when you go play at home, but that's still just a sign of the progress that they have made. And Arizona just needs to continue. You just, I love the Martian. It's a great movie at the end. When he's talking to the cadets, he has this great speech where he says, he gets asked the question, did he think he was going to die up there? Yes. And he accepted that going in. Obviously it's a fake situation, but just bear with me here. But what he says is you just begin. You do the math, you solve one problem. And then you solve the next. And if you solve enough problems, then you get to come home. That's where Arizona is at. You you don't think about what the end goal is or what this staff could accomplish. I don't think it's worthy of that conversation yet. That might come later. The conversation for how is Mark Watney going to get home? Yeah, eventually he had to get there. Eventually he needed to contact NASA. Eventually he had to figure out how to launch the... What was it? Not the her- how he was going to intercept with the Hermes, right on the map, the Mars ascent vehicle. But before he could do that, he had to figure out how he was going to keep getting water, how he was going to feed himself, and how he was going to survive. In Arizona, you just keep taking steps forward and celebrate each of those steps. And once you solve this problem, get in quarterback situated situation figured out, for example, for the next couple of years, then you solve the next problem. And you just keep progressing, just keep progressing. And then eventually the end goal that some fans probably had in their minds to to accomplish at some point when Jed Fish was hired, you can get to that conversation eventually. But right now, you just got to keep making progress. Solve one problem, solve the next. And if you solve enough problems, then you get to come home. I appreciate everyone listening. I will see you next time. And I almost forgot because I'm not going to close the show right now. USC and Arizona State, no opinion this week. I thought USC would cover. They didn't. Was never really a competitive game. Got about what I expected from both of them. So they get no opinion this week. Lean win category, Oregon, Arizona, Utah. Outright winners, UCLA and Washington State. Fans should be in a little bit of a celebratory mood. Lean lose this week. Cal, Washington and Oregon State. Not a disaster. I'm going to talk more about them tomorrow on uh, on the show, I think. But I, I would not be panicking if I were Oregon State, Washington. I think you got to you got to use uh, a little bit. I actually I still got a little bit of time, so why, why don't I talk about that a little right now? So, um, Washington doesn't survive their first road test, right? And they'll get another one this week against Arizona State. They should be able to win that game. They've opened as almost two touchdown favorite, and and Washington just got beat. I don't, it's not time to panic. It's, it's not worry time. It's a long season. It's the coach's first year. I think they've already surpassed a lot of people's expectations. Certainly mine. Thinking they were going to win 10, 11 games after the hot start. I don't think was ever reasonable. Could they still get to eight or nine wins? Yeah, of course they could. And when you had four the week, the year before, if you could come out with eight or nine in year one, man, that's a heck of a good sign. If you're Kalen DeBoer. But teams don't play at their best every week, and Washington was not at their best. They will learn from it and get better. Michael Penix did not have his best game. He easily had his worst game as Washington's quarterback. Threw a couple of bad interceptions. One was a really good play from the UCLA defender, but one of them was a a bad throw and a bad decision. I don't expect that to continue because I've got four games of evidence of what he's capable of. And I'm not going to look at one bad game and say, well, that's what he's going to become now. No, I've got no reason to believe that. They didn't play their best game. And unfortunately, they were going against an opponent in UCLA that's experienced, that's veteran, that's talented, that has a coach that knows how to win games. And they were playing really well. I think it's that simple for Washington. I don't think it's panic time. Oregon State, my concern level is slightly higher because Chance Nolan not only has this injury situation now, but can't take care of the ball, but they have a chance for a get right game this week against Stanford. I expect them to be able to bounce back and beat the Cardinal who are just way, way down. And I don't even know if they could get to three wins as they did a season ago. We'll see how certain games play out, but 
I, I think both programs, fan bases there, Washington and Oregon State, got to be able to to practice a little bit of patience here. Because I think in the long run for the season, the outlook is still overall positive here in 2022. I do appreciate everyone listening. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you next time.